Good morning. Um, those of you that have gone through COVID, um, yesterday I felt great. No. Today, very nauseous. Um, so if I sound sluggish, I apologize. And that's how COVID is. I mean, one minute, one day, you could feel great. Next day, horrible. Horrible. So I apologize if I sound sluggish. But I'm very nauseous. I'm going to read a little bit from Romans 10, verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Thief on the cross. Jesus, remember me when you're into your kingdom. Thoroughly I say to you, today you will be in paradise. When you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, your sins are washed clean and you will be rapture ready. Which we're all praying happens this year. I'm not going to say, for sure it's going to happen this day, for sure it's going to happen this month, for sure it's going to happen this year. That's my grandson in the background, I'm sorry. Because we don't know. We don't know. Oh, and I'm, I'm negative. I tested negative. But lingering side effects for this one, which I believe is Omicron, could last for a while. So I may have to pause the video from time to time. But, um, yeah, because we, we don't know that day and hour. Only God knows. You know, and if that day, month, year comes and goes, and it doesn't, the rapture doesn't happen, people can get discouraged, you know. But it is very, 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 very soon. We're about to have a nuclear fight bodies. I'm so ready. This one's falling apart. <laughs> so, believe me, I understand what it's like for life to get tough. But you know what? We have a Heavenly Father that loves us. The Holy Spirit's always with us. And Satan knows that you're a threat. That's why he's trying to come after you, but he was defeated at the cross. You are covered by the blood of the Lamb, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And we see the finish line, and it's coming up very soon. So hang in there, because we'll meet at the marriage supper. <coughs> One second, I'm sorry. This article I have is from Prophecy News Watch. The economy is tanking, man, but this is all prophecy. <coughs> Has the final meltdown of the U.S. consumer now begun? I'd say yes. According to the New York Fed, total household debt in the United States increased by $212 billion during the fourth quarter of 2023 and is now sitting at a grand total of $17.5 trillion. Wow. So what does our government do about that? Well, they give money to other countries. <laughs> They give money to illegals. Yeah. I suppose the good news is that we aren't $34 trillion in debt, like the federal government is, but $17.5 trillion is still really, that's really bad. So, um, it's far more than any of us can handle. Any more than the U.S. households can handle. Unsurprisingly, let's see if we can get through anything with Jesus. Unsurprisingly, delinquency rates have started to spike. Well, that's kind of odd. It's good. It's great, but, you know. And I fully expect this trend to intensify in the months ahead. Let's start by taking a look at credit card debt. We all got that, don't we? During the fourth quarter, it hit a brand new all-time record high of $1.13 trillion. I'm sorry, one second. I have to pause the video from time to time. Americans are increasingly turning to their credit cards to cover everyday expenses, but I can relate. With debt hitting a new record high at the end of December. According to a New York Federal Reserve report published Tuesday, I said to myself, if I had $30 in my savings account, no, 35 and I said, I'm going to keep it in there. I'm going to keep it in there because I try so hard to have savings. Then I woke up the other morning, the other day, and I had $20 in my checking account. I'm like, okay, well, there goes that. <laughs> Check the credit cards for gas, and you're like, okay, let's see, I got $10, so I won't go over my credit limit if I spend $8. So we're all... We're all going through it. It's a way of life now, but remember, this is all prophecy. In the three-month period from October to December, total credit card debt surged from $1.13 trillion, in an increase of $50 billion, or 4.6 from the previous quarter, according to the report. 
It marks the highest level on record in Fed data dating back to 2003 and the ninth consecutive annual increase. The average rate of interest on credit card balances is now way above 20%. Wow, they, they shouldn't. That shouldn't be legal. But our government doesn't care. On either side. That's my mother, I'm sorry. If you heard that. See, we all have that uh, nasal drip. So, And so, it has been very foolish of us to run up so much credit card debt. You know, I don't like doing that, but, you know, when you have no money for gas and you got to deliver and you need, you know, you guys understand, you know, sometimes you have to. You know, if you have no money in the savings, no money in the checking, and, you know, you need gas in the car, or you're, you need food, or, you know, your kids need medicine, you just, you do what you got to do, you know. And now millions of Americans are falling behind on their payments. I thought they said that the delinquent, I don't know. In fact, it is being reported that credit card delinquencies surged more than 50% in 2023. Credit card delinquencies surged more than 50% in 2023 as total consumer debt swelled to $17.5 trillion, the New York Federal Reserve reported Tuesday. Debt that has transitioned into serious delinquency, or 90 days or more past due, increased across multiple categories during the year, but none more so than credit cards. Credit cards, they're, they're rip-offs. They're rip I, I wish I didn't have any. With a total of $1.13 trillion in debt, credit card debt, that moved in serious delinquency amount to 6.4% <coughs> in the fourth quarter, a 59% jump from just over 4% at the end of 2022, New York Fed has reported. As delinquency rates rise, lenders will be forced to become more stingy. That means U.S. consumers will have less money to throw around. <laughs> I've always had less money. To <laughs> stop. You know what I mean, guys? I mean, it's like, well, that's, that's, that's nothing different for us, huh? No 401k, no savings. No, we're not going to be here much longer. I'm not worried about it. The New York, the New York Fed is also telling us that <coughs> delinquency rates on auto loans are surging too. In the case of auto loans, delinquency rates are now above pre-pandemic levels, and the worsening appears to be broad-based, New York Fed researchers wrote. Loans open during 2022 and 2023 are so far performing worse than loans opened in earlier years, perhaps because buyers during these years faced higher car prices and may have been pressed to borrow more at a higher rate. That wrote increased delinquency rates merit monitoring in the months ahead, particularly with the amplified stress distress shown by borrowers in lower income areas. This is exactly what we would expect to see if the U.S. economy was plunging into a recession. There's literally people out there that think that Biden's doing a great job. I pray for anybody that is that blind to see that. A lot more Americans are having trouble paying their bills these days. <laughs> Boy, ain't that the truth. And as the economy slows down throughout the rest of 2024, this is just going to make matters even worse. One of the reasons why Americans have been relying on their credit cards so much is because virtually everything has become so expensive. That's the truth. And can you imagine with these gas prices I'm going to deliver for Uber? So when you get these 2 and 3 to $4 orders, I'm like, no. No. At this point, even a trip to McDonald's has become financially painful. Ugh, I don't eat there. The CEO of McDonald's, bleh, admitted Monday that the sales for the fast food giant have dipped amid increased menu prices that have not gone unnoticed by customers. The Chicago-based chain has taken heavy criticism over its Big Mac combo that is priced $18. <laughs> I would, first of all, I don't eat at McDonald's. That place is so, bleh. I, in my my opinion, for censorship reasons, my opinion, bleh. Who would, you know who's the worst? And I, I, I've eaten there one time, and it's because a friend took me. And it was like about a year ago, but, um, oh, what's the name of that place? It's a burger place. Oh, my gosh. Five guys. I went in there to pick up an order once, y'all. And it said like $12. I was like. That's that's even expensive for a combo, but I was like, okay. I said to the guy, that must be the, the, the combo price. He said, they heard me. <laughs> I didn't mean to say this loud. They, they, I had people at the table by the door turn around. He go, I said, that must be the, is that the combo price? He goes, no, that's the burger price. I went, that's the burger price. <laughs> oh, I'm, my bad. I'm sorry. Even if I was rich, I would never pay that much for a burger or combo. I, I wouldn't. 
I don't know how these places stay open. Anyway, I think what you're going to see, as you heard, into 2024 is probably more attention to what I would describe as affordability. McDonald's CEO Chris, Chris, I'm not going to try and pronounce that last name. His name's Chris, said on an earnings call with analysts. In 1996, you could get a Big Mac for just 99 cents. Man, things have changed. Who, who would want a bleh, Big Mac? I've never imagined that we would be reminiscing about the good old days of the 1990s, but here we are. Bible talks about this, too. Bible talks about this. Let me look it up here. And I'm sorry, I got to do this on my phone. So let me look this up real quick. See if I can find it here. Yeah, Revelation 6 verse 6. Let me see. Um, okay, I'm looking for King James. Okay. And heard a voice in the midst of the four living beings saying, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Yeah. It's going to keep getting worse, guys. I miss the good old days when it seemed like there was a bank branch on just about every corner. Ours closed, actually. January 1st, it closed. Once upon a time, it was so easy to set up a bank account that even a kid could do. But now banks all over the nation have gotten into big financial trouble and they are shutting down branches. The one, like, hop, skip, and a jump right around the corner from our house that's been there forever and a day, Wells Fargo, closed. Bank of America has emerged as a front runner on the ongoing elimination of costly brick and mortar bank locations in the U.S. It said it would shut down 160 last year and have already announced 30 in the first month of 2024. There are no signs the trend will slow. And there's literally people, and I'll say, I know I'm repeating myself, but it just boggles my mind that there's people that think Biden's doing a good job. Wow. A total of 139 scheduled bank closures were made public in January, more than the monthly average across 2023, according to their regulator. The Federal Reserve is doing all that it can. That's for another video. <laughs> to try to prop up the system. I don't believe that. But I still, I don't, I don't think any of them give a flippity flu. But I still expect another wave of bank failures in 2024. I said it all last year. I'm not saying the rapture is going to happen in 2024. I mean, it could. But we don't know. You know. But it's soon. But I don't know why, but 2024 keeps sticking in my head. In this sort of an environment, I think that it is wise to not have all your eggs in one basket. Heck, we can't even afford eggs now. <laughs> we really are moving into wild and unpredictable times, and no financial institution is 100% safe. If you have spread your assets around, I've never had any. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> that will help your risk. That will help um, mi mitigate your risk, I'm sorry. Of course, most Americans don't actually need to spread their assets around because they hardly have any at all. That's, that's what I just said. <laughs> I just said that. According to one reason, and I'm, I'm not laughing and making light of this, but that's literally what I just said. According to one recent survey, 60% of all Americans have $500 or less in their chest. <laughs> Man, I, I would be going, woohoo, if I had five. You know how much I have in my savings? $8. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had that much. Had like, what was it, 30, 35 the other day, and I ended up having to transfer it to my checking. That means that most of us are living right now on the edge of financial disaster, and we are collectively piling up more credit card debt with each passing day. The stage is set for the final meltdown of the U.S. consumer that will be truly horrifying to watch it play out. We're not going to be here much longer. Imagine how bad the tribulation is going to be. You do not want to be here for that. And remember, Satan knows where to attack each person. Some have said all of the above, but... Have you ever seen those, um, I know I say this in some of my videos, but do you ever see, uh, um, like those videos or like commercials where they go, um, are you suffering from health issues, maybe financial issues? Um, good. I'm like, you got an all of the above button, man, that's easier for me, <laughs> you know, but you know what that means? That means that we're a threat. I assure you the Holy Spirit will get us through and we are about to go home and we're all meeting at the marriage supper, so Put on the full armor of God. Whatever we go through between now and the rapture, remember, God's with us. Holy Spirit never leaves our side. 
I'm going to go out there and help my mother with my grandson. Um, thank you for your prayers. Yeah, one day I'll have a good day and I'll be feeling great. Took my grandson to the park today. Horrible. So, got to rest up today. Got to go out and deliver tonight. Um, thank you for your prayers. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, the symptoms change, you know. So, um, this one was tough. My mother is feeling 100% better. Tom's feeling 100% better. Me, I'm still day by day, minute by minute. Except one day I'll feel great. Oh, I'm, I'm doing a lot better. I'm doing a lot better today. Ugh. So, um, but I'll get through it. You know, I'll get through it. Keep looking up, family. Keep listening for that trumpet. We're going to hear it soon, and all of this will be over, and we will be home. God bless you, and I will talk to you soon.